All right, you know what? Um, I don't think it really matters too much if I'm smoking a cigarette on YouTube, right? People smoke on TV and stuff, right? Anyway. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same exact thing onto the back of the train. Got to make sure that we have the train and the shell selected. Okay. We're going to add a boolean modifier to the cube or from the cube and we want the difference we're going to apply that and we should get some holes we did in the rear but not in the front now why is that Are they not going all the way through? They're definitely going all the way through. Let's just take these and scale them down a hair. Sometimes if things aren't kinda in the right place, it'll give you a hard time because maybe there's too many, too many cuts in between here. If we look at our wireframe, Oh, that cut is still there actually. You have to undo further. There we go. So again, we're going to just scale this down a little bit. Now this is actually applying to the cube at the difference. Now is this going to do both sides is the question. It's not. It's only it's only actually making it on that side for some reason. If we slide it over, do we get a different result? I don't know why. I don't know why it's not. Let's scale this. See, now we're in the side of the object, though. I'm going to just scale the X. Hmm. It looks like it's making two cuts there, but it's, it's showing like it is there, but it's not here for some reason. All right, I'm gonna undo the scaling and moving and everything like that. All right, we're gonna just try to do this one time like this again. Otherwise, I'm gonna use another round cut. I really wanted to avoid adding too many round cuts. Um, just gonna apply that. This applied modifier was not first result may not be as expected but it worked this time for some reason see this is these uh booleans are a little bit strange and they're not exactly always the best thing to use but when you uh when you need them they work as long as you don't have too many vertices in the area you should be okay now it made that it made that cut nice. That was really nice. Okay, so now we can delete these objects. And what we're gonna do is come back into the um, the shell. I'm gonna select the vertices again, and we're just gonna start filling these little gaps in. So selecting all of okay let's uh not be in wireframe mode oh it looks like are they filled they're not filled i don't see an edge there so what's this thing here we can grab this and move this around just kind of an extra little vertice hanging out here for no reason I 
I'm not a professional, guys. I wish I was. So we're going to scale that down. And we're going to just delete these. We're going to delete these vertices. We don't like them. We're going to fill this. And then we're just going to fill... Mm, We're going to wind up with a little triangle here because so we're going to select these. We're going to fill that one and then we're going to fill this one. And that's kind of ugly. See, that's why you want to avoid using these booleans. But because our shape's not uh, really bent, it's flat, right? That might show up if we apply a material to it and start to texture it. But it, we might get lucky and that might come out looking nice. So what we want to do is come over here. We're in our material panel now. Oh, and we don't want to use nodes. So I'm going to come over here to the node editor. Right. And we're going to deselect use nodes. Because we are in Blender Render, we don't really want to mess around with the nodes. This is not very complicated texturing and material work that we're doing. So we just kind of want to go with a default Blender texture just to kind of see what it looks like to start with. I'm going to just make it pink. I like pink. All right, now what the, what the hell was I doing? This one was the top, I think, right? No, this one was the side. This one was the top. This one was the front. There we go. Now we've got windows. We can see all the way through our train. Woohoo! All right, back over to here. Uh, well, if we're going to be working on the side, what the hell do we have this for, right? Um, that looks, that looks okay. We're going to do the door. And then we're going to work on adding in the light. Um, this little ridge. I don't know. Again, that guy's model was pretty detailed. So I'm going to try to kind of go with that idea and keep this as true to the shape as I can while still making it squared without having too many uh too many vertices in it oh i forgot to add a texture we're just going to call this testing material all right this is the little name panel you can see that this is the the material that we have and this is the materials name that we're working with had we more materials we can actually simply cycle through them and click now, what the hell, I'll give another example. All right, we come up here, we hit the plus button, and that'll give us a new list. So we hit a new material, and we'll just make this one blue. Okay, now we can assign that to the selected area here, and you can see that we can kind of paint our, oh, it's not a bus, uh, paint our, um, train car so we could just select all of these and that's where like the vertex groups and everything like that comes in handy like I was talking about earlier but that's a little bit more complicated stuff than what we really need to get into right at the moment so just for an example this is really basic kind of texturing without having to do any UV mapping or anything like that but we're gonna we're gonna map this out because we're gonna make our own custom textures that look like the train um yeah i'm just gonna use what the guy said he did was just use really really simple textures without having to try to make them realistic or anything so we're just going to undo and deselect all of those so we don't have multiple colors all right we're going to come in here we're going to delete that but 
it still exists. We can change the entire color if we want to look at it in a different way. Sometimes uh, different, different static colors like this help when you're looking at your model. See, uh, we have a little bit of a gap there that I might not have noticed if I didn't have this particular shade on. So it's it's a good idea to while you're modeling to just kind of look at things in a different perspective. All right, um, I really like the pink. Anyway, yeah, we can fix that up easily. I'm just going to come in here. We're going to deselect these, make sure that we don't have any there selected. We're going to come in here, we're going to select that one and just bring it in a little bit more. Now, it's like Ninja Vanish. Nice, smooth, just the way we like it. Okay, now we're going to come back over here and we're going to have to doctor up this little edge here because we've still got this guy just hanging out doing nothing we're gonna delete that vertice or is there a smarter way to do it uh, we can delete the edge we're gonna select this edge we're gonna delete X delete Okay, that wasn't the one we want to do. There's a good way to do this. I know there's a better way. See, what happens is when you delete the vertice, it deletes every plane that's attached to it. This will be... This will be our resolution. This is going to work. It looks it looks like it's broken. It's really complicated and messed up, but you don't really have to worry about it. All we really did was delete one dot. All right, so we just select both of these. Mm, you know what? I can fix up this one now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to delete this one. Press X. Delete that. Right click. Okay, now I'm going to select this one, come in over here, select that one with shift, right click, hold alt and press M. And we're going to merge the first one at the last one. And that's going to make one nice, pretty little edge. Now just hold shift again, select everything and F to fill. Now we're going to come back up here and we're going to do the same thing up here as well. We're going to delete this one and we're just going to fill these. And now we've got a much, much more clean uh, model and it's got less vertices, which is what you really want when you're trying to draw something the more vertices you have. Um, just for an example, I'm going to save this project because it's always a good thing to save your process anyway. So this was called the RDC1, right? We're going to save this and I'm just going to show you guys something real fast. I'm going to just start a new project. I'm going to reload the startup. Okay, now we're in cycles, so we don't want to do that. We're going to go back into Blender Render, and I'm going to delete this cube, and I'm going to add a UV sphere. Now you can see that in order to get a, a ball, you have to have many, many more vertices. So I'm going to scale this up just so you guys can kind of see more easily what I'm talking about. Now I'm going to subdivide the hell out of this. All right. Now, as you can see, didn't do anything to improve the shape, but it added way much more math for the computer to have to figure out. And I'm trying to rotate this right now. I'm holding down my middle mouse button and trying to move around. And you can see by looking at the grid and looking at my thing that even though this is just the same exact shape as what we started with, when I'm not looking at the vertices, it's not too much of a problem, 
right? But then we, we can hit this button, we can smooth it, and that didn't actually add anything to it either, <laughs> which is funny. Because realistically, theoretically, this should be like a perfect sphere, but it's not. So we're gonna undo. Th we're gonna undo this, and I'm gonna just show you something. I'm gonna start undoing. All right, we can see our vertices beginning to disappear, and now we've got about that many, and I can still easily freely look around this and it says that there are 7682 vertices in this shape now we hit smooth and look at that it looks looks pretty nice and come over here add the subdivide surface modifier on add in two subdivisions Two is a pretty good number, and well, we can we can work on this and get it smoother and everything like that. But that's not what we're trying to do right now. I'm going on a going on just getting sidetracked here. We're just gonna open our DC one anyway. So just so you guys understand the purpose of trying to keep even even when you want really high quality smooth shapes you can see just from that one little uv um, example that more's not always better sometimes less is more all right mm, this side is as simple as it's going to get because either way, we don't have any vertices here on this line or this line to attach to. And we're just going to really cut up the whole model trying to get all of that going. So we're just going to leave these vertices here. And that's just kind of the way it is when you're using these booleans. What I should have, I should have done a better method. Um to really make these windows. I should have probably started with the windows. That's okay. You live and you learn one thing at a time. What other models do I have on here? Uh, nothing too interesting right now. <clears throat> anyway, um, Okay, coming back in here, now if we round cut, bring it, undo, round cut twice, bring it up here and scale that down to about here, that looks okay. And then, what are we working with like this? Hmm. Let's take a look at the front of that train again. See, that's not like that at all on here. We're just going to go without that. We're going to make this a lot more simple. We're going to extrude this little doorway here. <clears throat> I don't know what the back looks like. Maybe I can get another picture of another train real fast. RDC1 train. Alright, see here's one with that. This is actually more true to the one that we're working with. Uh, it does look like a little coupler there. Hmm. 
This is completely different, but this is a model. It's still got that little ridge on the top. Um, now we just got a door recess there, so we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that whole iron framework around there. We're just gonna add in two handles and we're gonna do the door like that. That'll be nice and simple. And then we'll add this little, um, I don't know, bumper plow. Or should we do a coupler? I guess we could put a... Hmm... Hey, I don't know. Excuse me, I didn't, I didn't go to sleep last night. It's uh, seven o'clock in the morning right now here. Okay. Uh, we're just gonna do the door, and we're gonna add a coupler, and I guess we're gonna go with the plow. I'm seeing that seeing that plow shape on a lot of these almost every single one of them has that little that little plow <clears throat> okay um, now again we're extruded out in the front is that the way they look in the picture what does the front of the train look like that's recessed in it shows that it's out on the diagram but they're all recessed in that's an easy fix anyway back in here okay I wonder why the blueprint shows out we're just gonna deselect all of these corner edges we're gonna make sure that actually we can hit alt and shift and select the edges like that okay and then make sure that we don't have anything we don't want selected like here in the back we don't want these back edges selected we don't want to be moving these okay so now we don't want any of that we're going to grab the Y, we're going to scale the Y, and grab the Y again, bring it in, and just kind of scale it a little bit, make it a little bit smaller, and then bring it in. Now, how much does this look like the picture? It's really important that you always have some kind of reference model that you're working with. So I don't know what these things look like in real life. You know, I don't have one in my backyard to look at. But theoretically, you can uh, model anything from some pictures. That's the wrong one. <clears throat> okay. This top needs to come out. So we're gonna do that here. more round cuts guys all 
All right, we're gonna grab, bring it down. It's about here. Wait a minute, this is at the bottom of that panel. This is the area we're working on right now. So we're gonna bring this up right there. And now the door goes in at the area where these ridges are. I don't want to add another round cut there, so how am I going to do this? I'm going to just grab all of this and bring it back forward. <clears throat> um, go into wireframe mode and just line it up with these other vertices all right now the problem is that door goes in at a sharp 90 degree angle so we're going to bring this in and then just pull it up now we want to make sure that we're lined up <clears throat> with everything else. Pull it back down. Now that door lines up with the bottom of the panel. <clears throat> And then we've got some other stuff. But we're gonna, what we really need to do is start making shape on the bottom. All right. So we got to just start adding in this detail. What I'm going to do is... start merging all of these vertices okay so that's alt M merging 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 now we got to just bring these out again we want to make sure we're lined up bring it down it's nice and square and effectively by merging what we've done is kind of uh, done another way to work around kind of um delete in a way okay that looks okay I guess this is too big over here so it looks like in the pictures they've all got this little box here for where the coupler goes so we're gonna make another round cut down on the bottom and right here under the door we're gonna go over here to select the face we're gonna click on here and we're just going to extrude this in a little bit we don't want to go too far because otherwise we're gonna go into our wall okay this whole thing could be a little bit better actually if we brought these walls in so what we want to do is make sure now that we're not selecting the faces we're selecting the edges actually we'll go with the vertices because that should select the whole I never filled in all of those okay coming back over here we're gonna take a timeout for a second we're gonna fill make sure that we only have one selected we're gonna fill these areas in here boy oh boy I wish whoops uh... that was the wrong thing 
Uh, I wish I could listen to some music, but I put I put a song on a video I was making on YouTube and the uh, artist or his lawyer hit me up with some copyright infringement even though I downloaded the song from a website that said it was in the public domain so don't trust websites if you're going to be publicizing videos what you want to do is go to YouTube and they've got a list of music that I guess I don't know if artists donate it or maybe they have contracts with them I'm not too sure about the technicalities of that relationship but they've got all kinds of things online from YouTube that you can freely use classified within the public domain oh we can just undo that this one is this one is okay I guess yeah we got a couple of triangles that'll be okay I filled this one in already uh, no <clears throat> all right So yeah, like cover songs and stuff like that is cool if you're making your own recording because you can't own a score technically because you can't own tones, right? Uh, you can you can own a recording and you can own um, an arrangement. I think with a recording you know like like a, a score arrangement but I, I don't think that you can own a song really as long as you give the original writer of the song credit and then you kind of do your own interpretation of that song as a cover I think you can do anything you want so if you've got some musical talent Put yourself up on YouTube. Okay, this is looking all right, I guess. The door should be a little bit more narrow in my opinion, but it's coming along, I guess. Um, so what we're gonna do actually to make those handles I'm going to show you guys a cool trick. Let me just get rid of all these other windows. We'll bring this one back down. We'll bring this one over. Slide that one over. We'll get... We'll just work from the one. We're not changing too many angles at once anyway. And I like to be able to see it more clearly. I wish I had my other monitor up right now, actually. Okay. Um, so we need these handles. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new object. I am in um, object mode now, not transform mode or um, whatever the hell they call it. You can tell because you don't see any wireframe whatsoever. Hold shift and press A to add an object. I'm going to add a cylinder. Okay. And I'm going to press Z. I'm going to bring that over here. Yeah, Z for wireframe, G to for, for grab. Scale this way down. Scale it even further. Okay, now I'm going to scale it with Z. Okay, now this is kind of the tricky part. 
We're going to add a curve onto here. All right, so what we want to do is extrude the object and then scale Z. We need to make at least two more extrusions to make this half decent. Extrude again, scale Z. Now that shouldn't have created a million spheres inside of the sphere, I think. Oh, I'm starting to get tired. Okay. Oh, if everything goes nice and easy, we're going to do... We're going to add another object. We're going to come down here on the menu. Uh, that's Shift A for Add. And we're going to add a Brazier Curve. We're going to grab this and we're going to bring it over here. We're going to scale this puppy down. We're going to rotate this on the Y to 90 degrees. That's R Y 90. We're going to scale this up. All right, this really shouldn't be taking too long. I'm trying to just kind of go a little more slow for the sake of the video. I'm going to rotate this on the uh, Y to give this curve this bend that we're looking for. But first, what we really need to do is kind of select everything. Um, press A to select all and select none. Now that we have all of them selected, we're going to subdivide this curve two times right now we're going to come over here we're going to select the bottom of the curve and top of the curve we're going to pull that over here in line with that handle now we're going to come back here again we're going to select the bottom most one that's unselected and the top most one that's unselected and we're just going to pull that over now we're going to scale those to make them a little bit bigger and that's roughly the shape we want so now what we're going to do is we're going to select the cylinder we're going to come over here we're going to hit the modifier oh and first we're going to give this guy a name spell handle um, stupid we're going to apply back over here onto the modifier tab we're going to apply the curve okay with the cylinder selected or the handle selected we're going to apply the curve to the object of the brazier curve now you can see it did this really whack stuff but that's fine you can also see that it does some really crazy stuff if we come over here and get a better look at it you can see it does really weird stuff it's kind of really weird and uh, I can see it looks like we've got too many too many extrusions in our object and it's causing it to like I thought have um, um, cylinders within cylinders so that's not that's not good what we want to do is we're going to just completely delete that we're just going to make another cylinder and we're, we're going to do this different this time we're going to name this one handle again all right now we're going to scale this to like 0.1 or something bring this over here we're going to look at our image scale it again get it down to about the right size grab it over here scale it again scale the z like five times scale the z two more times all right that's kind of close now we're just going to subdivide this 
yeah, that should that should do it. Now we're going to come back over here. We're going to add the modifier again, and we're going to hit the curve, and then we're going to do the brassiere. We'll grab it down on the Z, and that adds that nice little curve. We just want to make sure that we've got exactly what we want. Like that. Now, we're going to grab this only on the Z. And then what we're going to do is just move it over. And now we need to select both objects and move them at the same time. I know that that guy's there somewhere. G and Y, grabbing Y. Now, we're almost exactly where we want to be. The only problem is, it doesn't really fit onto the train. I'm going to scale it up, and you can see that even though I'm scaling it on the Z, it's following the shape of the curve that it's in. That's the whole point of these curves. Alright, we're going to select both objects. We're going to rotate the Z. Okay, and that looks nice. Except these stupid curves are never flat. We're going to select the curve. We just want to get this flat. Oh, I should have started that from the beginning before I added all of these subdivisions in. But I always forget about it. I'm going to select all of them and see which ones. Just rotate that in. Rotate that out. And we're getting there. One thing at a time. I guess if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? Or maybe it's not that hard. Maybe I'm just a dummy. Okay, bring this in, that looks okay, now what we're going to do is just kind of line these up, see how that's still wavy, that looks like hell, just going to make sure that these are all kind of getting our ducks in a row. That looks okay. It's not the best work I've ever done, but it's acceptable. I'm going to just hit S to scale it again. Shift Z. Oh, that's really distorting it all kinds of funky. We're going to leave that alone. Now, we're going to select the cylinder, we're just going to apply that curve, and now we're going to hit Shift and D to duplicate that. We're going to rotate R, Z, 180 to turn it all the way around, and we're just going to plug it in over here on this side. Or alternatively, what we could do is mirror it, though, hmm, how is that? I click on this and then hit that and hit J to join them, right? Uh, is it Shift J, Control J? 
mesh, no mesh data to join. Okay, so we got to select both of them. We have our handle, we have the thing, shift J. Now they're joined, right? They're not joined because I'm still mirroring, I think. Well, we'll fill in that handle in a minute. Let's work on the door. Yeah, see, that's, that's ugly, but it'll work. I'm not happy with it. I could have done much better on that. Okay. I'm gonna just try to subdivide with this window. Too many, too many, I don't like it. So, what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna come over here and instead of round cutting, I'm gonna subdivide the Subdivide the um, edge. And I'm going to subdivide again. Okay, now we've got this. And we come down here. All of this just to play Minecraft. <laughs> Scale the Z and get the window to be the size we want. We're going to grab the Z, drag these around. Okay, now that looks okay. So, what now we do is the same thing over here. Make sure we've got the correct vertices selected. We're going to subdivide and subdivide but not twice in a row because otherwise we wind up with one extra. We don't want any extras just kind of lingering around. I don't want to deselect the ones that we're not using. And this one just kind of lines up halfway in between <clears throat> this area. Doesn't have to be perfect right now because we're gonna cut it and then we're going to line it back up in a minute. This one's going to the top, and that's on more or less this line. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is delete this face. Okay. We're going to... lose the vertices we just added okay so I'm gonna do a boolean for the window on the door all right so I'm gonna take so these are roughly the same size I'm gonna take these edges no the vertices I'm gonna fill it It's not filling. Because there's a vertice here just kind of hanging out, doing nothing. See, that's garbage. That guy doesn't need to exist here. We're going to delete that. Right? And then just kind of fill this in. Now we're going to fill this in and it should work. Oh, for some reason we've got another straggler over here. How do I have all of these? Let me try selecting the whole thing, coming over here and removing doubles. There were zero vertices removed. Okay, so we've just got stragglers for some reason. I'm gonna delete that one. We're gonna do this again. There's another one here. Uh, it's because of our round cuts. It must be the round cuts. I can't think of another reason. Alright, 
right, that was a shift C to center the screen. In case you guys are wondering why I jumped back. Um, that looks okay. I really wish I was I was really good at this. But um yeah, I don't spend a lot of time practicing. I just really want this train model. <laughs> I really want this model. Okay. Coming in here. Now we're going to fill this. Oh, not that one. This one. And we're going to duplicate it. I'm just going to grab it on the Y, right? No, grab the X. No, it's the Y. For some reason I had it scaling. Now we're going to select faces. We're going to delete that face. Get rid of it. We don't like that one. Now we're going to come over here, we're going to extrude this, um, grab Y, okay, extrude Y only, E, Y, okay, I'm going to select all of this, again, shift P, or just P rather, excuse me, separate, uh, we can come out of here, we can turn the mirror off on this, we only need to have one. Uh, we don't need to keep moving the train. We're going to grab this one. Slide it over. Make sure that we're roughly about center-ish. Let's see what's going to be the best way to center this. We'll make a round cut here. Oh, we don't need to. All we've got to do is select it. Grab it, put that in line with the center of our train. Now we're already where we want to be. I think the window on the door was a little bit <clears throat> smaller than everything else. A little bit. Just scale that down. Never mind the fact that we're off for some reason. It seems like our line isn't perfect here. We're going to add the modifier onto the train car. <sighs> Boolean. We want the difference between we're on the wrong object. We can't be. Boolean. Intersect. Difference. Object. Okay. That's just our hole puncher. It's called 01 because we didn't rename it. That's why naming things is really important. Now let's make sure that we don't have any ugliness going on over here. That came out pretty nice <clears throat> because of the fact that... Um, that was weird. I'm showing vertices. Okay, you know what? That was the center of that one. It came out pretty nice because it, it's right here in the corner and it's all, I'm trying to point with my finger, it's all um, right angles because it was a straight line being in the mirror. It didn't have to make X's and everything like that. So we're going to fill this. We're going to fill this. <clears throat> okay. I'm just going to make myself another cigarette here. I don't recommend anybody smokes because, let me tell you what, I've been smoking since I was a kid, I hate it. It's addiction though, it's the worst thing in the world, being tied down by something that you don't like you don't really want to subject yourself to you just feel like you need to it's awful it's like mental slavery I'm not condoning anybody watching my video smoke cigarettes In fact, if 
if I had Nicorette gum or something like that, I'd really try to quit. I could probably go to the doctor and get it. I don't know. <clears throat> Take it from me. Don't smoke. It sucks. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your money. All right. Come back over here. We're going to scale this back up now. We're done with the front. Um, wait, save for that, uh, that thing there. All right, here's our little divot. We're going to take these vertices. Oh, boy. Okay, we don't want that one. All right, bring it up here. That's going to have to do. We don't need to get too carried away with technicalities. Should I round cut this? What do you think? I guess why not, right? Now what we really need to do is just kind of maybe it would be better to attach that like we're doing the handle. I think that that'll work out nicer, but I do want this be lined up with that. Okay. We're going to punch some holes in the window and I'm going to take a break from making this model for the rest of the day. I'm probably going to get back on some Minecraft and um tomorrow night as soon as i'm done with this model which i'm i'm gonna finish the video i'm gonna finish this model first the um shell and then um we'll add what the textures on tomorrow and that'll kind of be like my uh, 3D Modeling 101 tutorial. So yeah. What we're going to do is come over here. I'm going to scale this down on the Z. We want to flatten that out to the right proper dimensions. We're going to... Oh, see, look, I'm losing my orientation this is the most important thing we're going to come back hit shift or tab and we're going to go down here to the object option we're going to snap mm -mm. we're going to rather wait it should be snap No, 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 that's for the selection to the, right, we want to apply, oh, no, 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 we need to be in edit mode, sorry about that, we need mesh options, not object options, um, that's tab again, and we're going to snap, no, oh, uh, where is the stupid option for that, it's down here somewhere. I really don't know what I'm doing, guys. I just make it up as I go. Maybe it is object options. Transform. Origin to geometry. And that will automatically recenter the origin to the mass. 
or volume of our object. Now we are back in the proper mode to be scaling. We're going to scale the y axis where we want it to be. See, and that's why you don't want to change your object scaling in edit mode. Okay? So that orientation is really important for tracking the information when the object is moving and everything like that. It will throw off your it will throw off your um, bends. Okay, it will throw off your um, animations when you start getting into doing rigging and stuff like that. Which I'm not I'm I'm not an expert on that. I'm not I'm not good at that. I I make pretty nice models. I know a little bit about physics and, and fluid dynamics and particle or um oh what's the word I'm looking for? Um the particles and um the force physics. I know a little bit about fluid dynamics and making smoke and you know, lighting and setting up rigs for that type of thing, but rigging a, a actual model is a little bit beyond me at the moment you know i mean i'm, I'm working on learning um bones and and constraints and uh creating the puppet and everything like that but i'm not the best take me five times longer than someone who's efficient at it and probably longer than that um the modeling, I'm, I'm pretty good with the modeling, though. I'm just uh, taking my time explaining everything that I'm doing. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to just put the roof on as another object as well. Let's figure this out. I'm going to just hurry this roof. So, actually, what I'm going to do is scale this down a little bit more to get the roof on there and I just realized we need to <clears throat> fix the area where the boots are gonna go the uh, trucks let's take a look at the mm hmm we're missing that whole little dugout area there of our um, framework we need a door on the side and these windows now let's just do this quick I'm not really going to explain what I'm doing I'm just going to kind of go with the flow here all right I feel like I've kind of um, done enough where you guys if you're watching still can just kind of follow along I'm on the wrong orientation I want to be I want to be on that no three is a shift three should give me the other side it's giving me the it's giving me the top I don't understand why control there we go okay I don't know why that's like that it's strange Maybe uh, Blender change the default keys or something. Okay. Round cut. We'll do this here. We only need one actually. not really right we need two round cuts after all this one is going to stop this one from following you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second and we want to 
make sure we've really only got these bottom ones selected okay now see how it remains flat in between these ones um, and actually the whole point of that was that I need to select these ones as well and I'm not I'm in ortho I don't understand why it's because um it's because I've got so many round cuts now the shapes getting kind of wacko there we go but it looks like which one is that and where is it what's going on here the whole side of the train is goofy how in the world did that happen when I scaled it for some reason I didn't have it okay uh, we have to apply the transform uh, origin to geometry and that's what did it hmm oh because of the mirror right we're gonna come back into hmm, transform. Oh, we need to figure this out. I can just kind of manually do it. That was weird. I saw something funny. Center. Bring this back in. Uh, it should be a little bit taller. We're going with the shape and size. That's there though. Okay. That's just our handle, don't worry about that. Although, is that part of this? It shouldn't be. It's not. Okay. <sighs> Let me take a look at it from here. Make sure that we still have our shape. We get the other camera mode back out. move the whole thing okay and just scale it here like this now we've got our shape back the way we want it okay that looks good now back where we were a moment ago we don't need this camera we want this one Although, they're both essentially the same thing now. We're going to rotate the Z 90 degrees. Make sure we're working with the right side. Alright, we're going to grab this and move it back over here. And we're going to start again with these round cuts. Bringing it back over again. Okay. Now, the one because this is a I'm trying to point again with my hand because this is a square. That's what's causing these to not be. Um, 
Well, they're making 45 degree angles because of the, the shape of the inside of it because it's all one object, so. Okay. We don't want that many. We want only these ones. I'm just going to take these and we're just going to make sure we've got the right one. See, now we've got the bottom of the train selected for some reason. That's fine, that's what we want. Okay, now we're just gonna, I guess we need the bottom of the train selected. It's gonna, oh, too many of them. Move this up. Uh, I don't have all of these selected over here. Should do like a time lapse of this or something. And then, oh no, we still got one over here. This guy's just kind of hanging out, being like, we don't want to be part of that group. There, that's better. It wasn't too bad. Could have been Weiss. Could have been Weiss. All right, now this isn't lined up properly, but that's okay. We just get rid of the ones we don't want. Move this over. We're going to scale this back out. Oh. Mm. Now, actually, that I've decided what I'm going to do is... Make the roof its own object. Oh boy. I'm gonna get rid of all of these vertices. <laughs> One at a time. Alt M, merge at the center. And then we'll just have one line here instead of two. Maybe there's a better way of doing this. I don't know. I'm just like making it up, man. Let's make sure that we're getting all the right stuff. That was the right thing. We didn't pinch something. I don't think so. So far, so good. This is... Getting there. Yeah! Man. Bet you Andrew Price would have had this done like 10 times by now. I always like compare myself to everybody else that's been doing this type of thing for years and professionals. I feel like I should be on par with those guys. Okay, anyway, there we are. Um, and for some reason, we've got a triangle on the bottom. Okay. These ones we're going to have to merge. As well. Maybe there was a better way to do that. I don't know. It's done now. And it's okay. I think. Let's make sure that that's not going to be in the way of any of my cuts. And just slide that over, kind of get it halfway. 
All right, now the biggest problem I think is going to be because these windows are right in line with that. I'm going to just kind of drop them down a little bit from where they are, <clears throat> from where they are in the, um, my voice is starting to go. I don't usually do this much talking. I'm a really hanging out by myself kind of guy. Uh, I'm trying to scale this and it's not working. I don't know why that wasn't scaling. Alright, so that's roughly the shape we want for the windows. I'm just going to make them all squares because it's easy. I'm going to scale the Y like a ridiculous amount of times. Uh, we'll say like 10. Why isn't it it's not scaling in this mode? Why is... I don't understand that. That's really weird. I'm going to select the train. I'm going to add a modifier. Whoa! We didn't want to apply that yet. We're not done. Oh, we did it twice. That's because we were totally f brilliant. Um, I just don't want to swear on my channel. I want to have, um, you know, like PG, PG-13 kind of content. My kids watch it, you know? Let's see. What am I doing? The mirror. No. Ugh. Such an idiot. We want a boolean. Okay. Now we want to apply the boolean to the cube at the difference. Come down. Try again. From the train. Boolean. To the cube. At the difference. Okay, this isn't working. This is how we did the other ones. This should be doing it. It's because we're too close to that. Too close to that top edge, I think. I don't know. That still works. That works for me. Am I on the wrong side? I'm on the wrong side. Okay. See, that's what I'm talking about. Stupid. Okay. Bully. To the cube at the difference. There we go. Now, we just got to do that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more times. And look at these ugly cuts we're getting. This is awful. Um, I'd be best off trying to make an array of these cubes. So we're going to show you another modifier here. We're going to add an array, and as you can see, what that does is it creates an array. We need 11 in total if I needed 10 from 1. So now we just got to get our spacing. We're going to space this apart roughly... like so it's not quite perfect it's 
not quite perfect. Let's see, we go from 1.3 to 1.4, so let's go like 1.35, and that's closer, 1.325. Uh, we'll do 1.345 that works it's not quite perfect but it should get the job done and hopefully it's not too many to do we're going to go to the cube, and again, we want the difference. Seems to have worked. All right. Now, let's see what this looks like here. Not too much. That looks okay. Now, the question is, should I make the doors just kind of like a texture on there? Oh, I don't know. Oh. What else do we have left to do? We've got two doors, three doors, and a roof. The roof will be simple. I'm going to add the roof real quick, like, make sure I'm in the right thing. We're going to add the roof as a cube and scale y like scale the x rather um, scaling is locked for some reason two two that looks close enough i don't know what i did that locked me off of the scaling boy I try to make a tutorial video and more like wind up embarrassing myself okay we'll bring that down all right we're just gonna kind of minecraft it and by that I mean not have many uh, vertices Ugh. X Ugh. I'm tired now I'm just hitting buttons So unfortunately, my little 10 second opening animation scene took like 48 hours for my computer to render. <laughs> yeah. I had to render the um, lens flare using blender render and i had to render the rest of the video i wanted it to look as nice as i possibly could so i did that using cycles and it turned out that it was just kind of not the best thing ever now i think that comes in a little bit like that over here let's look at the uh Look at the picture. The whole thing comes up like an extrusion. Right? Maybe just a little bit more and I'll extrude it one more time. I think that looks better, right? And that one's more round, but the other one, uh, not that one. Oh, come on, what am I doing? The internet. Yeah. I don't know. It's Minecraft, right? 
we don't want too much roundedness. I really didn't expect this video to take as long as it did. Kind of really just wanted to do the. Why is my scaling locked? I don't. I don't know what I did. I'm gonna have to look that up now and figure it out. Uh, we wanna. Now that's gonna also round it a little bit more as well. Transform origin to geometry. Now that one will work out fine because it's not mirrored. Right? And that will sit right on top of this guy. So we're going to scale the X. Ugh, not in that mode, buddy. Okay. A little bit more. All right, there. That looks that looks almost believable, and I think for a Minecraft car, that's a pretty nice model. Just got to make some textures on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the doors on. Call me lazy, but I just don't see adding any more cuts to this. I could have. I should have. The trick I showed you with the array to punch out those windows is how I should have done the entire train. What I should have done was model the train from the front, work my way to about here, and then like make one segment and then attach an array to the middle join the two objects and then mirrored it and that would have been a lot better and smoother from the whole beginning but you know oh, i think it looks okay i'm not the best modeler in the world and um i'm going to use a easy method for attaching the um uv to it too i'm just going to project it from the view That'll save a lot of time instead of actually doing a full-on UV unwrapping tutorial and everything like that. Now the question is, I'm going to move this onto this layer for the moment. Oh, no, it's M. All right, I just got to take a look at this. Why is that? What is that? For some reason my floor is going through the floor. Alright. Which one is going through? This needs to come up. Okay. Hmm. model the inside as well and from what I can see people are walking around on the insides of the trains or maybe more in depth in the future so I really don't want to be lax on something like this don't want to don't want to be lax on anything really I try to do my best 
in everything I do. Sometimes that's just a mess, but I get there in the end. This looks okay. This is acceptable. So there it is, guys. Something that should have probably taken a professional about 15 minutes to do, but you know what? This is my first time doing a train. I've done weapons before. Chainsaws, shotguns. I've got... I'm going to just save this one. Actually, I'm going to come here. I'm going to move this back to the other layer. Make this blue. <laughs> oh, blue is gone. Where did blue go? Alright. Well, uh, tomorrow I'll show you guys how to do texturing and, um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know if you want to see another, um, let me know if you want to see another video like this, show you some other tricks, um, doing 3D modeling, um, something different than Minecraft. Not exactly a pro, but I know a thing or two. If you really wanna, if you really wanna learn how to get good, though, I would recommend definitely checking out um, Andrew Price's videos. He's got hundreds and hundreds of videos. And um, yeah. Anyway, maybe I'll show you guys some render cycles. Cycles render. Thank you for watching. This has been Mixed Artist. I hope that this video wasn't too uh, crazy. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, I don't know where any of my things are. I got a bunch of stuff on my desktop. It's all crazy. I'll show I'll show some uh, other things that I've done um, on another video. Thanks for watching.